Hello everyone, welcome to another devlog video for Homegrown, the casual farming game I'm making using my own engine. And today I'm going to be showing you how I'm implementing particle effects into the game. So, starting off nice and early today, it's 8.15 right now, just made myself some breakfast, some banana pancakes. So, just gonna have them, then I'll jump straight into some programming and I'll show you what I'm working on in a bit. So I've actually been working on the particle system for about a week already, getting the boring setup stuff done, and today I'm going to be actually adding some particle effects into the game, which is why I chose to film today. And uh, so I just want to quickly now show you what I've implemented so far, so you can see what the current state of the particle system is. So here in the game is a particle effect using the new particle system, and there are various basic settings that I can choose for the effect, such as how many particles, their velocity, their size, life length, whether they're affected by gravity, and stuff like that. And I'm going to be adding support for more settings over the next few days as well. Uh, one big improvement that I've made this time that I didn't have in my previous projects is support for 3D particles, like you can see here, where each particle is an actual 3D mesh. Previously I just used 2D effects like this, where the particles are all just flat squares, uh, that always face the camera, and they can then also have a texture on them, which can be animated, like this. Um, there's actually a slight transparency issue here with the textures, which I'll hopefully be able to fix later today. Um, but yeah, I've added support for both 2D and 3D particle effects this time, and I'll be trying them both out in the game later today. First up this morning, I've been making it possible to load up particle systems from files. Um, up until now, I've, if I wanted to create a particle system, I had to hard code it in the code like this. Um, but now I can put all of the settings into a file like this, and that then gets loaded up into the game. Uh, so if I want to change any of the settings or create a new particle system, I can do that without having to edit any of the code. And then the next step, which I'm not going to do today, but it would be nice at some point to then have a program that allows me to edit the settings of the particle systems and uh, show like a preview of what the particle system is going to look like. This here is an example of, of one that I made for one of my previous games, and it would be really useful to have something like that for this game as well. I've just been trying to fix the transparency issue that I mentioned earlier. You can see it again here with the particles kind of overlapping each other incorrectly. Um, took a bit longer than expected, I got a little bit stuck at one point, but all sorted now, literally all sorted, uh, because the way that you fix this is by sorting the particles based on how far away they are from the camera, and that then allows you to render them from back to front. So you want to render the ones furthest away from the camera first, and then the closer particles can get rendered on top of them. And when you render them in that order, it makes sure that the transparency works correctly. Next up today, I've been implementing support for different spawn areas for the particles, so they no longer need to be emitted just from a single point, they can now be emitted in an area. So for example, here are some particles being emitted in the shape of a square, and here are some particles with a circular spawn area. And uh, here in the, in the particle system file you can see how I do the settings for this. So I'll definitely add support for more spawn shapes in the future, but these two will be enough for what I need to do today. Coming up to half past 12 now, just stopping for a quick lunch break. I don't actually have to cook today because I've got some leftover lentil stew from yesterday and I'll have that together with this homemade bread that I made the other day. And uh, so I have that, then I'll go out for a walk with Rufus. And then this afternoon I'm going to start actually using all of this stuff that I've been adding support for and adding some particle effects into the game for things like when you're digging and harvesting plants. So back to work after lunch, I've just implemented the first of the new particle effects, which is a particle effect for the watering can to make it look like you're actually watering your plants. And just like everything else, working on these particle effects is going to be an iterative process. So 
feel free to give me feedback on any of the particle effects that I implement today. I'm mostly just going to be roughly implementing them today to get started and then as time goes by I'm sure I'll keep refining them. Sticking with the watering theme for now, I've just been creating a quick particle effect for when you fill up your watering can at the well, and that looks like this. Not my most amazing bit of work ever, but it'll do for now. I have to say, it is quite time consuming creating these particle effects. Um, it really would make such a difference to have a, a particle system editing tool, like the one I showed you earlier, where I could edit all of the settings using sliders and have a real-time preview of the changes because having to go into the text file every time, edit the text, then restart the game just to see a tiny change, um, it's a little bit annoying. Anyway, next up I'm going to try and create some particle effects that use 3D particles, because the watering effects they were just using 2D quads with this water drop texture, but now I want to try and create some particle systems that use 3D meshes for their particles. Just implemented two more particle effects. Firstly, when you're planting seeds, which I wasn't really sure if it needed a particle effect, maybe it still doesn't, but that looks like this for now. And then using the same 3D model that I used for that effect, I created another effect for when you're doing the weeding, and that looks like this. It's quite nice. One thing I'm really happy with though is how the 3D particles look. I was kind of wondering if it would make much of a difference between the 3D and the 2D particles, but now that I see them kind of bouncing around and rotating in 3D, I think you definitely can tell the difference, and it does add something to the effect. So I'm glad that I took the time to add support for the 3D particles as well. So next up, I want to make another 3D effect. I'd like to make a dust effect, but before I do that, I'm just gonna go and get some fresh air and go for a quick bike ride. I just wanted to quickly talk about the way that I've structured the particle effects in the code this time because I've gone a bit of a different route to what I've done previously. So particle effects have a lot of different settings and features associated with them and in my last game, Aquilinox, I pretty much had all of those settings all together in one class and then the code for emitting and updating the particles was also one big amalgamation that made use of all of those settings. This time I was planning on adding support for even more settings and features for the particle effects, so instead of trying to integrate even more functionality into this already messy code, I decided to try a different approach. So this time I turned to my old favourite, the component based architecture, where the base class of a particle effect is pretty much empty, and then all of the functionality and settings are added in the form of components. So here's an example where I'm creating a particle effect and I basically add the features that I want that particle effect to have as components. So if I want the particles to be affected by gravity, I add a gravity component. If I want them to bounce on the terrain, I add a bounce component, and so on. The main benefit of this is that it makes the system really scalable. I can very easily add support for new features to the system. So for example, I'm working on the dust particle effect at the moment, and I thought that it would look good if the particles could be affected by air resistance, and I also wanted the particles to get bigger over time, and these were both things that I didn't have support for in the system yet. In the Equilinox system, I would have had to edit this code and try to integrate those new features into this mess somehow, uh, but this time, much easier, I just create a new component, so here's the one for the scaling up effect, with all the relevant code and settings for that feature, and that's it. I don't have to edit any of the existing code, and now when I'm creating a particle effect, I have the option to add that scale up feature to that particle effect. So that's a bit of a change that I wanted to try this time, and so far, I've been pretty happy with that decision. So here's my first attempt at creating a dusty particle effect, which I'm currently using when you dig in the game, and I think I kind of like it. it. Might be a little bit too much at the moment, there's quite a lot of dust, definitely needs some tweaking, but in general I'm pretty happy with the way that the dust feels and kind of moves around in the world. I like the new air resistance 
feature that I added to the particle effects. And again, I'm really pleased with the way that the 3D particles look. I think that using a 3D mesh for the dust particles just, just fits the art style of this game a bit better than a flat 2D texture would have done. Last up today, one more particle effect, this time for when you're harvesting plants. And I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Um, again, using a 3D mesh for the leaf particle effect here. And these are the settings I'm using. I implemented one more component, the line spawn component, so that the leaves could spawn all the way up along the stem of the plant. And um, yeah, I think it looks good. It's quite satisfying. It did make me realize one thing though, which is that this particle effect only really works for this specific plant because the other plants have different colored leaves, different sizes. So it looks like instead of having one particle effect for harvesting, I'm going to need one particle effect per plant, or at least a different variation of this particle effect for each plant. So more work for me to do at some point, but I'm done for today and it's time to make some dinner now. So that's going to be it for today. I'm really satisfied with how the particle effects are going so far. Um, it really makes a big difference to the feel of the game when you're playing it. It makes your actions feel so much more impactful and real, like you're actually interacting with the world, which is nice. And yeah, as I said earlier, if any of you have any suggestions regarding the particle effects, do let me know. Today was just a quick first implementation of the particle effects. so. I'm hoping that I'll be able to improve them quite a bit before this game is done. Before I finish, I want to give a big shout out to the top Patreon supporters, who are Walden Yan, Dave Handley, Chris Naismith, Seven Sign Bits, Alan Lance, Yuri Kralebeck, Josiah Hillman, Dieter Reiner, Tari Chung, Christoph Herpo, Adam Farkas, Gregory Horvath, Hagen Vingard, Matthew Connerton, Miggy Doze, Andrew Witt, Marek Mikolajczyk, Sean McCrory, Caffeine Coder, Timothy Gibbons, Alexander Chavez, and Neil Blakey Milner. So a massive thank you to you guys, and of course to everyone else supporting me over on Patreon. For this video though, that is it, so thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll see you all again next time. <laughs>